Welcome. I am Kelly. Kelly Higgins is my name. I am the owner and CEO of Elevated Agent. I am so happy everybody is here. Uh, what a great turnout. A little unexpected. I have been an agent for 16 years as of this year, and I am so excited to bring all of my knowledge and um, Oh, Lakeisha, all my knowledge and my marketing wisdom to you guys. But really, if you can't do anything in Canva, then what can you do with our products, right? So that is exactly why I am here today to help you guys really figure out some of the little, little nuances and tips and tricks that I know in Canva to maybe make some of our templates or whatever you're working on inside of Canva a little bit easier for you guys to deal with. So I am just going to repeat myself just a little bit since there are so many new people jumping on. I'm like adding them as we go. Um, so I will have the chat box, box, box open the whole time. If there is something that I am training on that you guys would like for me to go a little bit deeper on, please drop that in the chat box. I will be watching it. Elise is in the chat box also. She is on our team. She is our project manager. She's amazing. Most of you, if you've emailed us, you've probably talked with Elise. Um, she will be in the chat also. So if I miss it, feel free to tag her or something like that. Also, if there's something that I'm not training on that you're like, there's this one thing that I can't figure out and it's driving me crazy, feel free to let me know in the comments and I can also um, talk to that. Okay, we are going to jump into a more advanced class. Um, I was working just to show you guys, this is my best friend. She'd probably uh, be embarrassed that I showed you guys this, but we were just playing one day. And this is something that you can do with your um, link tree, guys. You can make it into a video. Look how cute this is. Wouldn't that be cute to have to wear a landing page where people could click on it to get their home value or whatever? Um, this is my girlfriend, Cheryl. Isn't she amazing? Thank you, Cheryl. But those, these are just options that you guys can do inside of Canva. I, you really, if you think of something, then just say, okay, now how can I do this? So we did a Letters from Santa um, campaign last year. Loved it. This was literally my link in bio. Um, the only thing it had was two buttons to purchase it now because I really wanted everyone to purchase that. So let's say you have this amazing, amazing new listing you could do this link in bio. Also, let's say, uh, let me find a fun picture here. Um, let's, ooh, this is where I get caught up because I always get into it. Okay, let's say you just had a really fun front door um, and you wanted to say, so how I would build this into a link in bio, this is what I would do. I would go rectangle, because you have to make your own buttons, right? So what does a button look like? It starts with a rectangle. Um, and then let me go a little bit smaller, maybe a little bit fatter. I'm gonna say maybe right here, cause I kind of like how it has the lights. Um, I don't like this color though. So I kind of like the color. Okay, so here is great. Um, <clears throat> that rectangle, that's an R on the keyboard. So if you just go R, brings up, it's really a square, but <laughs> they call it a rectangle. You can do the same thing. T for text. It'll throw up your text in what one of your um, brand kits. So if you're like, why does it always give me the same font every time I hit T for text? It's because that's how it is set up in your brand kit. So over here, here's our brand kit. Okay, so we have our three fonts ready for us to use very quickly. All right, you can also do C for circle. Woohoo. Okay, since this is advanced training, I'm going to show you a great trick. And that is going to be your forward slash, real quick before I finish up here. Forward slash. That is what's going to bring up this amazing menu. It's pretty cool. Except for, I'll be honest, I don't use it that much. <laughs> they probably spend a lot of time uh, coding that, and I never use it. So here we go. We want to create our own button. I don't like the color of the button so far. I added my text a little early. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on our box. We're going to come up here and we're going to change the color. However, um, I don't like any of the colors that are available. So I'm going to hit this X or this plus, right? Because we're going to choose a new color. But I want to choose a color off of the picture. So I'm going to come over here to my color picker. 
And I'm feeling maybe one of these grays down here, but I know that I kind of want it to be a lighter color. So I'm thinking about that. Okay, so it's blue, kind of, came, kind of came up like a gray blue, but I don't hate it. It feels kind of airy and I kind of like that it's reflecting off of the glass. So we're gonna go with it. Um, I usually try to stick with fonts that are a little bit more legible for buttons. My favorite font is this apparel, but it's just not super legible for buttons. It's a little bit more thin. It is that italic. Um, so I just prefer to use a little bit more of a uh, legible font here. Let's see. Okay, so I like my font to fit inside of Yeah, Jenny, I'll talk about that in just a little bit. That was kind of a bonus. Um, how about at the end of the call, I'll kind of go over that because um, I want to make sure I'm covering everything inside of Canva and not because um, that would be actually more of a Instagram in Canva. So I will cover that in a little bit. Um, so I download fonts, but I don't think you guys should probably have to do that unless your designer has picked some like extremely special font because Canva has a gajillion fonts guys and they are amazing. Canva really does well with fonts. Um, so I've only, these are the, I've uploaded these fonts only because I've worked with a client at some point that had one of those fonts in there. Don't, so I really want you guys to know that Canva does have some really amazing fonts. Um, so we want this to fit inside of the text box. Let me get kind of get back on here. Uh, okay, so the other thing about this is my letters are really far apart, which I typically like. However, for a button, I feel like they usually, it usually is a little bit better if they're a little bit closer together because we are kind of condensing things, right? I'm also going to bold it up so that way it's easier to see. My button's still too big. So now we're going to make it a little bit smaller. We're just going to center some of our things. Now, if sometimes I like to look at it from far away, but then every once in a while, you need to get real close. Okay, here's another tip. Sometimes when you are trying to center things, it wants to lock you to the design. And I can't move this up without it locking to that top part of this box. I hope you guys can see that. Okay, if I move my mouse at all, it pops it to the, lock, to the top. So if you scroll in, you will have a lot more control over it, okay? So instead of it going there to there, now I can really move it anywhere in this box because this font sets lower in this text box. See the space between the bottom and the space between the top. This font does not sit centered in the text box. So if I go here to center it, it's centering this text box. But if I scroll out, that text is not centered. It is low. And I can see it because I'm a designer and I just look at this stuff all the time. That's gonna bother the heck out of me. So I'm going to just pop it up a little bit. Now it is centered. <laughs> That's the stuff that just drives me crazy. So again, with our text box, if we click on this text box and we want it to pop a little bit more. Okay, so let's come over here to our three lines. Remember, this is what our border weight is going to be. Um, if I pop a, a two on there, that's gonna give us just a nice little border. Okay, so now I want it to pop even more. I might even make it a little bit bigger to make it stand out. Okay, so we're gonna add a shadow because I want it to pop off the page a little bit more. So I'm gonna come over to elements. I'm just gonna search, search shadow. This is one of my favorite things to do. If you come over to graphic, all of these shadows are really amazing. Um, one of the ones that are my favorite to use is I like this little guy. Um, however, not for this one. I'm going to use this straight tiny guy. It looks really small, but this is very good for nice straight lines. So I'm going to not do that. I'm going to take this little guy and I'm going to bring it to the bottom because I want this box to kind of look like 3D. Okay. So right there, that looks, that looks pretty good, but it kind of looks like a lot, like that's a really big shadow. So instead 
I'm going to just use my keyboard with my arrows and I'm going to pop it up just a smidge. Oh gosh, here comes the smidge. I used to say that way too much in my training. Okay, so that way it's going to go behind the box, but technically if I click off, this element is above the box. So it's positioned on top of the box. So what we need to do is we need it to go behind the box because you can see right here at the bottom of the box, you can see that shadow starting to come up on top of the box. We don't want that, that doesn't look very professional. So we wanna click on our box, or excuse me, we're gonna click on the shadow and we're gonna come up to position and we're gonna hit backwards. Now watch it, there it goes. You can, you could, you can literally see it going off of the box. Watch that bottom line. Now we know it's behind the box. So I like that a little bit more. If you still feel like that shadow is too much, click on it and come over to your transparency. You can bump it down just a little bit. See the difference? So we're just playing with it, guys. We are playing until we feel like we have it into a place that we really like. Now, if you want it to look like it's kind of bowing off of the page, how you do that is we're gonna come here and just copy and paste. So now we have number two. But if we come up here, that's not right. Like the lines at the top, how do we fix that? So we're gonna click on the element. We're gonna go to flip. Okay, I love the flip. Now we're gonna flip it vertical. Now, you see that? It, that line went from the top to the bottom. So now we have our shadow looking just like the bottom one. We're gonna bump it down just like we did the bottom one. And we're gonna put it backwards behind the box. So now we have a shadow on top and behind the box. And look how much more that makes that button stand up, stand off the page. I typically prefer only one shadow and I usually prefer it on the bottom. And since I just do one shadow, sometimes I'll make it a little bit stronger. That is just my preference. Any questions as I'm going through this? Anything? Yeah, the shadows are very cool. Um, let me let me add another page. I want to show you this other one. I'm going to just do a, a quick rectangle here. Um, I'm going to make my background a color so it can stand out a little bit more. Please don't hate all my colors here. I'll try to pick ones that are a little bit more appealing. There we go. Okay, so I want to show you this one square because these can really be cool. Um, I'm going to click on this one. So this is a... Uh, a great way to make something look like it's popped off the page. Sometimes when people are new to shadows, they want to put a shadow on every single side. So step back for a second. And if you think about real life, shadows are not on every single side of us. A shadow is only one sided or two sided. Okay. So you don't want to put a shadow on all sides of an item. So what we're going to do, since ours is not faced that way, we're going to just whip it around. We're going to make it smaller and we're going to just put it onto the side of this box here. You could even use it without a box and it kind of creates a box if you want, but sometimes I like to do it like this. And now you have a box with a shadow or you could throw the rectangle backwards. There we go. And you can create a really cool dark shadow inside of your then darker color, which sometimes that is cool. Also, that creates even more of a 3D effect. Just like that. See how this looks 3D now? All right. So we talked about shadows. Now, the other thing that is similar to a shadow um, is called a gradient. So a gradient is where it goes from really dark on one side to lighter and lighter and lighter, or kind of like an ombre. But typically, it instead of an, an ombre goes from one color to another color, a gradient goes from one color to less of that color, the higher it gets. So um, we're going to come up here. We're going to just search gradient. I'm going to clear these for you. Um, let's real quick, let's come back up to our photo actually. Um, and let's say we want some text kind of here at the bottom, but if we put text at the bottom, like look, it like gets lost in the shuffle, right? Because this photo has a lot going on. So let's say this is like your email phone number and stuff down here at the bottom. 
Now we want our gradient. We're going to go to our graphics. Again, you can always come up and you can toggle free or pro. Um, this one is a lighter house or picture. So I'm going to go with a lighter gradient. If it was a darker picture, maybe even more like this, I would probably go with more of a black gradient. So I don't need, okay, so here's the trick again. Be open-minded when it comes to your gradients. You don't have to use them as you see them when you click on them on your page. Like you don't have to use it just like this. You don't have to say, this is the only thing you can do with it, right? No. Think outside of the box. We are gonna make this puppy really big, way off of our canvas, but then we come at it great. But look, look, we're gonna just play with how it looks. And then you can also then even play even more like this, okay? So don't always feel like you have to use the product or the element or whatever, exactly how it's shown to you inside of Canva. You can play and you can have more fun and make things how you want them. If it's not working for you one way, it's okay. Well, let's figure out another way to make it work. So now, as you can see, our text is so much more visible down here that we put that gradient on. Let's do um, a nice dark one. You can also do a corner one like this. Just note a lot of these, you really can't change the color. Some of them you can, but so this one's going to make just your corner a little bit lighter or darker. Okay, so if this happened, this is great. I'm really happy um, that this happened. So what happened here is this element was bigger than the background of the image. And so it automatically became the images, excuse me, the templates background. So it took over the picture we had originally, and now the element is the background. We don't want that to happen. So if this happens, just hit your back button or your undo button, and it will undo it. The reason why that happened is because you can see this element, it, it's taking over the whole thing. So it automatically thinks you want it to be the background. We don't, that's okay. But if you don't want it to do this, then you have to make it to where it's not the size or there it happened again, just hit the Z and it will not do that. Okay, if that ever happens to you, just hit that, that undo button. Okay, so there's that gradient. Oh yeah, I was gonna show you, a, a, let's do a dark one here. Sometimes if I'm looking for a specific one, um, like you can type white or black or whatever. The circle ones are great. Those are what I was showing you I was using behind people. This one is a very uh, concentrated one. So this is one if you're going to want to use, you would want it to be pretty dark at the very bottom and not have a very gradual um, fade. This is a much more concentrated fade. So if you really wanted the bottom darker, that would be a good one to use. But like this one, you would want all of your text then to probably be white. Like that. Is that cool? Any questions on that? I'm gonna kind of work with some images next so I can show you guys some of those tricks. Any questions on that? Okay, cool. I'm looking at my list here, making sure I'm going through. Did shadows, okay. The next thing I'm gonna show you are some images here. Here are all my fake stock people. Let me find a good one to work with. It is kind of funny that I sit here and stare at fake people all the time. I'm like, you know, somewhere this person is real. I really like this one because she's, this is a great quality photo. <clears throat> Um, okay, so moving on to photos. This is one of my favorite things. So a lot of us, we know that we like to use our own imagery on our templates, which is great. I think you should. I think you should put your photo on as much as you can. Uh, I know a lot of people are scared or nervous to do that, but you know what? No shame in, in that game at all. So if you want to remove the background, you're gonna click on your image. You're gonna go up to edit image. And then there is this little baby right here. I do know that this is a premium option. So, you know, I, I'm aware of that. Takes a good old minute. Okay, so there she is. 
if let's say there was something in the background, you can come over here to the left-hand side and you can hit erase or restore. Um, you can slide in um, and then you can also come over to the left-hand side and change your brush size. Uh, Nicoletta, this is something I've downloaded from like Unsplash or Pexels or something like that. That's where I've gotten all my stock images somewhere where it's legal for me to use. Okay, so here's our gal, we're good, she looks good. So now we don't have a background. We could put this over any image, okay? Um, I wanted to show you, because sometimes this happens, if again, like above, your this, okay, so if I click off on her, see I want her, let's say this big. This is like, a, like I'm, I'm making a story or something for Instagram, okay? She looks great, right? So if I click off, she is now going to become the background because you see how our image takes up the whole art area. So once I click off, she's now technically the background. Okay, we don't like that. So we're gonna hit the undo button and it will pop her back out, thank you. Or you could, I'm gonna show you up here with this. You could take this and you could right click and you can detach the image from background which will then pop it off of the background if you decided you didn't wanna do that. Okay, so an, a great way for this to not happen though is if you can just tighten up your crop here, um, that will help, so. Another thing that I like to do with my images is sometimes, again, to create a little bit more visual interests, we will click on the image and let's have her a little bit of a shadow. That's going to make her look a little bit more realistic. And it's also going to give us um, a little bit more of, of a layer. So to do a like realistic backdrop shadow, we're gonna just go to backdrop here. And so now that gives us a really nice shadow like that. So to edit it, we can um, create, we can change almost anything really. I usually leave it just how they have it. You can change which way the shadow goes. More blurry. Pretty cool, I like this. Oh, okay, Brittany, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I guess I was a little confused. Um, so that is how you make a shadow on a person. Sometimes that happens. So what we wanna do is our X button or detach. There we go. All right, here she's back. We back. Sometimes you might see people with a white line around them or a black line around them or something like it makes it look like they are cut out or like one of those cool stickers. So how you do that is you click on your image and it's technically a shadow. So you're gonna hit shadow here and you're gonna go to glow. This is definitely advanced, so. Um, so now we're going to edit our glow here. I'm gonna make her have a white outline. So I'm gonna change my color here to white. And then the transparency is going to be zero. Oh, excuse me, the blur is going to be zero. So we don't want it blurred at all. We want a really nice solid line. Um, hold on, I apologize. You can't see it very well over my background. Let's turn it, we'll turn it back to black then so you can see it better, okay. Um, so I clicked black, but see how it's gray? That's because of the transparency. So we're gonna make the transparency go all the way up. So now we definitely have our nice outline. Um, usually you don't, you want it kind of big because you want people to really know what it is. So I'm gonna kind of go like that. Um, and then there's our, our white, gosh darn it, the same thing. Okay, we're gonna do this again. Let's, get, let's put her on a nice blue glow. We're gonna edit our glow, we'll make it white. Okay. All the way, zero, transparency all the way up, size. You can do the size however you want. I tend to like my outline bigger. I'm moving these in so she doesn't take over my background. All right, there we go. So that's how people get that white background or the outline, I should say. 
I like doing that. Sometimes it just makes you stand out a little bit. Um, it also feels a little bit more playful and fun. Um, so that is something that I like to do if I'm just having a little bit of fun. Now, let's say you want you on a, in front of a house that you just listed. Um, let's put her in front of this really fun pink house. Um, but you don't necessarily want the house to overkill the whole post, right? Because that's a lot. We want you to stand out. Let's say you're doing a post of, hey, I want to be your buyer's agent, um, pick me. Okay, so this background is just way too much. So we're gonna go, we're gonna kind of click on the background. We're gonna go up to edit image. And now we're going to, let's come down. I'm gonna show you kind of down here so that way you guys can see where I'm going. Um, we're gonna go to blur. And I just go auto. And then you can decrease how much, that's a lot. That's almost distracting, but we're just gonna decrease it just a little to where it's just a little bit more faded in the background, okay? Now, if you give it a second, it'll pop to the back. This takes a second, there we go. So now the background is still there, but it's not quite as in your face. So if you were to write some text, if you were to put like a fun box right here, and then you put, even if we did it like this, kind of have her off a little bit, but um, let's see. This is a terrible design technically, but all these different colors. But so that's kind of how I would do it. Like I would probably pick a color off of her. Maybe instead of that, maybe I would do, instead do like her bluish shorts there. And then you could put your information here. What if you did the information in the orange? Yeah, see, that's fun. So there's how you kind of do all, I kind of put a whole bunch of things at once. So maybe not, don't do that many effects in one. You wanted to have your text pop, oops. Um, we're just gonna do it all. We can go to effects here. Let's do a little bit of a lift. Here's the thing with the lift is it, I tend to not like it as much when it's on a lighter background because it feels dirty. It almost makes it feel like it is a little bit dirty. Um, but so if I do it with a lighter background, technically, or I tend to put the intensity pretty low. Just like that. Any questions over some of those things? I'm going to move on in just a minute to some of the apps and some of the special things that you can do inside of Canva. So I, I definitely want to stop here and just ask if anybody has any questions over some of the editing of the photos, editing of the people, the cutting out the background, the shadows, the gradient. What questions do you guys have on some of those things? I'll take a quick drink. All right, I know we've been on here for a while, but I'm gonna need you all to maybe stand up, shake it out. I need some more energy. I need some thumbs up in the comments. I know um, that y'all are still here. I can see how many of you, I know there are people here. Thank you, Brittany, I really appreciate you. Um, thank you, Sonia. I always loved that name, Sonia. Thank you, David. Thanks, Lakeisha. All right, guys. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm here though for your questions. So if you feel like you're like, can she do that again or whatever, please just drop a comment. Um, great, Brian. Thank you. Lori, great. Thank you. Okay. So the next thing I kind of want to show you guys is... Let's go over to our apps. Okay, first, actually, we're gonna talk about, um, okay, how to find, if you want stock people, you I don't know if you guys should be using stock people because y'all should be using yourself. I use stock people because I am promoting this to people that aren't like I need to use people that aren't real. But really you guys, I just don't know if you should be using stock people, but just in case, if you just 
search stock people and you go to photos. Um, okay, that's not a good example. So working woman, you really can just search for whatever you want and they're all in here. This pulls, okay, here is a really good tip here. Hold on. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Let me go to this website. I'm going to show you. This is the website I tend to get photos from. It's called Pexels. It's great. This is the same website that Canva pulls from. So all of these, not all of them, but most of them, you see here, you can find on Pexels. If you come over here, so you can keep clicking on the wrong, and you really like this girl, right? You really want her, but it's a freaking pro image and you don't want her. Go to Pexels. I'm dropping it in the, in the box here. Go to Pexels and search the same thing and she'll pop up, okay? If you search working woman, Let's just see. They also have, um, like this girl, I use her a lot. Um, they also have videos, which I love. Uh, so here, these are all of basically the same photos that Canva has and you can download these for free and they might be a premium over on Canva. Now, as your loving bestie, that's also a real estate agent, I am here to remind you of fair housing laws. Y'all don't be putting families, don't be putting babies or old people, be careful, okay? We don't want anyone to think that you are discriminating, that you are leading, be careful. I use stock people, you all need to be careful doing it. Um, okay, there you go. So back to your logos. I want to show you guys this. I'm just throwing a photo over here, okay? Or maybe like this one. Let's say this is you working and you want to show yourself in action. All right, so here is your logo. You see it says co on here and it says logo at the bottom. You're going to have this. If you put your logos in your brand kit, like we showed in our one, they will automatically be, um, be able to be found here. To find your folders, you're going to go to projects. They recently moved this and it is a huge pain in the butt. Um, okay, somebody changed that. I'm gonna have to fix that. So here are all your folders. If you are like me and you have a ton of them, you can search. But if you click on one, let's say content calendar, it is going to pop up, right? Here we go. Awesome. However, now since I clicked on it, it'll also be in my left-hand menu here at the bottom. Now, if you're like me and you have a whole bunch of folders open that you really don't need open, if you hover over that folder on the left-hand side, there'll be an X, you can click that and that folder will go away. So logos is one of the ones that I wanna work on. So see how this has the white box? If I put it over here, it is still going to have that white box. It is not a transparent background logo. That does not look very professional. It doesn't look very good, okay? So we're gonna try really hard to not do this anymore. So what you need to do is you need to upload this with a transparent background, it's probably gonna be a PNG, okay? Now, if you have something like this and you want to say, let's do the background remover with text, the background remover just doesn't work very well. It's going to make the edges of your text, which should be nice and sharp because it is made professionally in a professional designer software. Um, it's going to really see how now it just looks not good, right? It's, it's because that background, or, that background eraser makes this jagged because it's really just trying as hard as it can to get all of the white. So now your lines are not sharp and clear at all. We do not like this. This does not like professional. We're not going to do that. We are going to upload with a PNG or if you are extremely amazing, and your designer, or you know how, can save or send you a SVG. I'm going to type it out real big on this screen. This is the type of file that is best for logos because this is the type of file that you can use inside of Canva and still change the color. For example, I will show you two of our logos. 
Here is an EA elevated agent logo. That's it. This is an SVG, and this is a PNG. Excuse me. This is a PNG. They look exactly the same. The only difference is they are different file types. They look exactly the same. They do the same job. Okay. The only difference is this is a PNG with a transparent background, and this is a set image. I cannot do anything with this image. This is an SVG, also does the same thing. However, as you can see, when I click on this, I have an option that comes up as color. Now I can change the color of my logo. Only because it is an SVG. This is something that you have to have professional software like uh, Photoshop, InDesign, something like that to make it. You cannot save this out of Canva as an SVG. That is definitely an advanced tip, um, but I highly recommend if you can do that. I love having that as an option because sometimes you need a white logo and sometimes you need a black logo. And instead of having a gajillion logos, you just have one. See how versatile that is? Like, that's amazing. I love that. Um, so that is kind of a tip for logos. Um, again, if they are real big like this, you can always tighten them up. The reason why they are real big like that sometimes and not big like this one is real close into the words, that is because that's how they were saved in the professional software. There's nothing you can do to change that once they're inside of Canva. You will live with that forever, forever and ever. Okay, I wanna show you something else cool that you can do with, um, oh yay, Mary. Um, something else that you can do with logos. I always encourage people to get a pattern logo. So this is a team, the my team I'm actually on, but also I help them with some of their marketing. Um, yes, Nina, it will be sent out next week. It'll be on YouTube, but we will send you the link. Um, so I love having a pattern that you can use in so many different ways, okay? All this is, is it is their one S repeated over and over. They took this one S and they did it like this, okay? You're not ever probably going to have something that looks like this, right? That is a lot. Um, so usually what I do is I usually like make it small and I probably am going to turn down the transparency to like almost nothing. But look at the texture that allows you to have on the background. That takes your, your white background and changes it so quickly. Um, so I wanted to kind of show you something fun that you can do with an image. So let me find a good stop person. We are about two thirds of the way through this training. So if you guys have questions, I would really start thinking about them now. Um, let me find, okay, this is going to be a good one. Well, actually, no, let's do this one. <laughs> Sorry, Christy. Um, let me open up a different side here, actually. That one's kind of green. We're going to just do a post like this. And I'm going to show you how to have a little bit of fun with your images to make them look a little bit more 3D. Okay. Um, this is going to be fun. I'm kind of changing my mind as we go, but we're going to, we're going to make a, a just lifted have some really cool effects here. We're gonna go down to our videos. Okay, we're gonna use that one. So now if you do not want to pay Canva, again, go back to Pixels, Clouds. And then if you click right here, these are all videos that you can use of clouds and you can download them for free and then upload them into Canva. Okay, now let's go find a house. I'm gonna add another food. Um, we need a really nice clear picture. Okay, this one's good. Oh, let's do this one. All right, so here we go. We have our house and everything, right? But we need to take out our background. Adding a link, you bet. 
Amanda, I will definitely do that. Sorry, with, when I'm on Zoom, sometimes my Canva just, or my internet really in general moves really slow. So that looks kind of dumb right now, I know. But we are just going to, let's say you just listed this nice little house. Now again, watch, when I click off, it is going to want to make this picture the background. I do not want this picture the background, okay? So I'm not gonna do it actually, because I want to save time. So I'm gonna slide this bar down over the top of that. So that way, and I don't care if it cuts that off because this is technically outside of the um, template here. So I'm just gonna slide that down to where it won't now. So I'm gonna click off and I'm gonna allow it to um, take its place there. So now I'm gonna come back down here. I'm gonna slide up this video. Let me get bigger. I'm gonna put it in the back. And so now you have, a house with moving clouds in the back. How fun, right? That is going to get someone's attention. That's going to stop a scroll instead of just having, like I just listed this house, woohoo, people scroll through that all the time. So this is something that is definitely going to catch more eyes on a just listed photo, guys, for sure. Okay, so now to download this, um, to download this, here are a couple of things that you can do. One, you can download this as a movie, which is it's wanting you to do. That's fine. Um, let me show you real quick. This, if you kind of, this is telling you right here, this play button, that's telling you how long this entire template is. Okay. If I wanted this as a movie, I don't think I need 20, 20 seconds of a movie, right? Like that's, that's a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this um, because that is the video. And it's going to allow us to cut how long the video is. I only, let's say we just want five seconds, right? We just want the five seconds. So now it's cut it for us. So now we're done. Um, oh, I know why, I'm sorry. I had two slides on there. So now we're down to our five seconds. Um, and so now you can download as a um, MP4 if you want, or if you want it to loop constantly, and let's say you want it kind of more like like if you wanted to send it as a text message, okay, let's say you have a buyer and you think you want this as a text message, you're not gonna wanna send it as an MP4. You're actually gonna wanna send it as a GIF, okay? So what this is going to do is it's going to download it kind of like one of those stickers on Instagram where it just continuously repeats itself. That is what a GIF is. It's going to be pretty small. And if you were going to want to send this to a prospect, this would be great to send in a text because it's not going to come across as a video. It's going to come across as one of those memes that you send someone like of um, Tom Cruise lifting his sunglasses in the text message. Like that is how this is going to come across. I was going to see if I could get it to pop up um, for you guys to see. I'm not sure you'll be able to see it, but maybe I can put it into the chat and you guys can see it. Does take a little bit to download. I apologize. Zoom always makes it a little bit harder. This will probably be one of the last things I show. So that way I can go back and show some of the things that people were asking for. We're going to do a link. I'll do, I'll go back and do the link because I'm going to show you how to do the um, link on Instagram real quick. Okay, I'm gonna see if this will let me post the GIF in the, in the chat so that way you guys can see. Ooh, fingers crossed it'll let me. Oh, there are just two more things I really wanna show. I don't know if it's gonna show up as a GIF though. Okay, so real quick, the two other things that I wanna show that were on my list, if you go to apps, this is how you can do your QR code, okay? So if you come up to search apps, just type in QR, hit enter, and this little baby's gonna pop up right here. Just do this one. We're gonna go to use, and then you can enter any link you want in here, okay? So I'm just gonna go and like copy this Pexels link. Like if you wanted people to go to this link to search, to look at something, let's say this was to get their um, home value. Here, let me just show you actually. Let me redo this, okay. 
Um, can someone drop their website in the chat and I'll, I'll use it as a, as a example. Um, I usually, uh, the QR code, perfect. Thank you guys. Oh, how fun. So many good ones. Nicoletta, you're the winner. Oh, hold on. Maybe, maybe not. I use my keyboard codes or hacks all the time. So I apologize if nobody. Okay, so uh, let's see. Oh, I was kind of hoping, I was kind of hoping for one with uh, where you can get your CMA. Anybody have that? Oh, what's my homework? Okay, so here's what I would do. If I were wanting to um, try to get someone to go get their CMA off of the QR code. So here is her website to get your CMA. So then we're gonna come back here. We're gonna paste that into the URL, generate QR code. You can customize it here if you want, but I mean, this is great, right? And then this, it actually technically has a transparent background so you can put it over anything. Okay, maybe not, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> Uh, you don't want it. I guess that makes sense, Kelly. Hello. You don't want it transparent because then they wouldn't be able to scan it. Um, but that is how you generate a QR code inside of Canva. This is um, a premium, but if you pay for your Canva, you can make as many of these as you want. And the great thing is it's all right inside of Canva. You don't have to go. No, the QR links are not clickable. You have to scan them with your phone. Um, so then this would take you straight. If someone scanned it, it would take you straight to this site. So that is how it's pretty cool that you can, you know, lead people straight to certain pages. The other one that I was really wanting to show you guys in the app is um, if let's say you want to have an open house flyer, um, just click maps. We're going to do a Google map and let me think of, okay, we'll just use this. So you type in your address for your open house. You can click import it. And then people can even interact with this if you share this with them as like a, a document or um, anything like that. But then if you download it or anything, this will actually just download as an image. Yes, Elizabeth, I'm changing lives today, guys. I'm changing lives. You can even interact with it. If you, why is it not working? And you can also have these. I don't know why. I must be doing something wrong. You can actually have these onto your websites and stuff like that too. Um, so that way it can be interactive. So this is a great way to show maybe where your listing is at. Let's say you're listing this as a new house um, and you wanted to put this down in the corner. So that way people could see where it was at really easy. Like, there you go. That's a great way to show where your open house is or anything like that. Yeah, um, to make it interactive, um, I think that if you share it, this is, I'm trying not to go into even more, but like if you embed it um, or if you share it as some of their apps on here, then it is interactive, but I'm not going to go down that road today, sorry. That is like a whole nother can of worms. Okay, so those were the two last things I wanted to show you. So now I'm going to kind of go back to this link in bio that we were working on. Um, and yes, Wendy, I'm gonna show you that right now. Okay, so we're going to act like this is our brand new listing and we want it to be a link in bio. Um, so that way, when I'm talking about it, I can just be like, if you want to see the whole house, click the link in bio. Okay, I'm going to make that black just to make it stand out even more. Um, you guys know I can't, I can't just leave well enough alone. I have to do something. I always feel like a lot of designers forget the men. I'm here for the men too, man. I try to throw some of you guys in there, even if I don't know who these people are. I'm like, this feels like a man right here. This feels like a man image. So I'm here for you, men, just so you know, in the chat. I got you. Also, while this is kind of going, um, if <laughs> you're welcome, David, if you guys are like, this is so cool, I want more, 
feel free to go to our website. We do create um, templates that you guys can use to plug and play. I'm sure that you probably know that. Um, however, we do have a whole website full of so many amazing things, um, text messages, emails, so many awesome things. You can go to shopelevatedagent.com. At least just threw that in the chat. Thank you so much. Um, we also, if you're like, I love all your temp templates, but I just don't really know what I am. Um, we have a brand quiz too. Um, I'm going to throw that in the chat as well. Go there, take that quiz, and it's going to kind of pop out what, um, what, uh, which one of our styles might best suit your aesthetic. So that's really cool. It's totally free. Okay, so I like Get the Vault. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. You know, I have put, since we released the vault, I've put over a hundred templates inside of that. Just the other day, I added 12 brand new um, business cards. So make sure you're checking that out. Um, okay, we're going back to our link in bio. Perfect, thank you so much, Elise. So now we want this clickable. So my biggest tip here is we're gonna kind of make this whole button, instead of all of these separate element, we're going to group them all as one element. So that way, this entire thing is clickable and not just the text or not just the box. Okay, we're gonna make this whole thing clickable right here. So I'm gonna actually look a showing. Oops. Gotta be on the spell. Okay, we're gonna have that say book is showing, we're just going to copy it. Okay, copy and paste. So it looks exactly the same. Now this one, um, Get my home value. Um, and then let's do, I'm just making some of these up. Okay, guys. Sell my house. All righty. So I'm going to go back to Lorena. Um, okay, so this is her website. Let's see, we want, um, okay, this one is interesting. Okay, uh, find a home. I'm just trying to find a house for sale here. Yes, Brian, I'm gonna show you. I'm, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just gonna show you, oh, 10 million. Yes, sold. That's amazing. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to, I'm showing you how to build out the LinkedIn bio, and then I'm gonna show you how to install it. I'm gonna go through it very quickly because we're about out of time. So just bear with me here. So I right now I'm creating the buttons that people can select. So we have to create the link in the buttons first. So let's pretend like this is her brand new listing. So we want people to go look at the listing, right? Or, or book a showing. So this one is going to go straight to the listing. So we're gonna click on that entire button. We're gonna select the whole thing and we're gonna come up to these chains and we're gonna click that and it's gonna go to link. I'm gonna paste the link into it. I'm gonna hit enter, okay? So now it says link added. As you can see, it's underlined. I'll leave it underlined. You don't have to leave it underlined, but sometimes I feel like people do expect a link to be underlined. So that's why I tend to still leave it, even though my designer self is like, oh, I don't love it, but I want more people to click on it. So I'm gonna leave it. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to her site again. Remember, and we're gonna get what our home is worth again. We're gonna copy that. I keep opening the wrong one here. Let's just shut that one down. Okay, our home value. We're gonna click on that whole button again. We're gonna go back up to our link, paste. Hit enter. Now we got our link added there. Now we're going to go back to the main website. We're going to go to our services, sellers. Okay, so let's say, um, let's say there's, a, you know, a button here that says list with me. Okay, there we go. So then we're going to go here. Oh, sorry, don't do that. Click on our button. I Sorry, I messed it up. Click on our button, go up to a link, paste, hit enter, our link is added, okay? Let's say we love it. Um, yes, beautiful website. 
we love it. This is exactly what we want it to look like. I would probably, if I were you, put your contact information here. Um, but just for time's sake, let's say this is exactly what we want it to look like. So I'm going to delete that. So we have just our one page here, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to share. Oh, the other thing is, this is very important. I am going to, um, I'll just copy your name here like this. Okay, you need to name it up here, something that's not weird because you will still see this. Okay, so I'm just gonna put your name here because that wouldn't feel weird. I would even maybe put your phone number. Okay, um, so it would look like this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to share. We're going to go to more. We're going to go to website. Now, this is the important part is you want to click on this button here and we're going to go to classic navigation. Excuse me, we're going to go to standard. We don't want the extra navigation. We really just want it to look as one website. So now we're going to say open website. So this is, and see how it pops up at the top with your name and whatever the template is named, it pops up like that. So that's why I'm like, might as well use that to put some, like that's solid, uh, that is solid um, real estate up there, right? So like email, phone number, something needs to go up there. So this is kind of like what your website looks like. So before we put it on Instagram, we're going to double check our links. Great, that went to sellers. That's what we wanted, home value. Perfect. And book a showing. We're going to pretend like this is our listing. $10 million sold. Perfect. Okay. So this looks a little crazy like this, right? That's okay though. So we're going to come up here. We're going to copy this. Now we're going to go over to our Instagram and Instagram has really updated their platform to allow you to do a few more things on your computer. So that is awesome. Let me resize this so that way you guys can see. Reset it. There we go. Okay, so now you can do a lot more. We're going to come up here to our settings. Um, and we're going to go to, I haven't done this in a minute. So hold on. Uh, edit, excuse me, edit profile. Um, and then this is where you're going to say your bio. This is very important. If you guys don't have a solid bio, um, we need to, oh shoot, you can only do it on mobile. Okay. Oh shoot, guys. Um, let's see what I can do here. Maybe I can shoot this onto my computer. Bear with me. A lot of people think that I am super techie because I'm a designer, but I'm really not. <laughs> um, let's see. I thought maybe I could put my, do my screen mirroring, but I don't think I can. Sorry guys, shoot. Okay, so I'll just talk you through it. I think. Thank you for you guys for being patient. I really appreciate you. Okay, so I'll have to, kind of walk you through it um, verbally. So if you go to, like I said, and you go up to edit your profile, um, just kind of like where we are here, this will be an option that you'll be able to change. So what you're gonna do, it's called links on your bio. So then you're gonna click on that and then it's going to pop up. Uh, you know what I'm gonna do, hold on. I have an idea, guys. I'm just going to do some screenshots here. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> when you can't figure it out, this is how it's gonna work. Okay, so when you look in your phone, you're gonna click on um, edit your profile and then links. And then this is what it's going to look like when you click on links. And then you're gonna edit your links. Let 
and you're going to then paste. I'll show you the next one here. This is what it looks like when you go to edit. So you're gonna hit this X right here, um, if you have a link in there. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back to our, pages like this. We're going to copy, okay? And then we'll just paste it into our theme, latest listing here. Screenshot and send that. You guys are being very patient. Thank you. I hope this is okay. I'm sorry I couldn't figure out how to do this very well. Okay. So now I pasted the URL right here into this URL spot. I've added my link, or excuse me, the name of my link. I'm going to hit that done button right at the top. Okay. And then you're just going to hit done all the way back. Okay. So now, now we're going to go back here. I bet it's updated. I'm going to refresh the page now that I've saved my link. Now I'm going to click on this and it's going to take me straight to this. And this is what it's going to look like. It's just view only and all of your links are still on there. And I will screenshot what it looks like on my phone. So when you click on the link inside of Canva, this is what it is going to look like on your phone. As soon as I can open it up for you guys here. I really apologize about this. There we go. This is by Nina. This is um, what it will look like on your phone when you click it. So see how your name is at the top with your phone number. That's why it's important to use that real estate um, with everything you can. I mean, use everything, I tell you. Um, and all of these are clickable. It'll take you exactly where you need to go. So that is the way that you're going to make buttons. Um, now, remember, if you download it as a PNG, that button will not, excuse me, buttons will work with PNGs, these websites. But if you're doing, I'm sorry. Buttons will work with PDFs. This has been a long journey. PNGs, they will not keep buttons. Neither will JPEGs. All right, guys, that is the end of our training. I really appreciate everyone staying on so long. It's been amazing. You guys have really uh, held out. Um, again, if you're not a friend of mine on Instagram, I would love for you to come and befriend me. Um, I am on a mission to hit 5,000 followers. I've never bought fake followers. I engage with everybody. So please go follow me. I really want to hit that 5,000, but I also share a ton of Canva tips on here. Um, using Canva fonts for your reels. Um, this one was super cool. You can um, copy and paste whole pages. So make sure you follow me on Instagram because I really do share some good stuff. So if anybody has any Final questions, I am here to answer. I know you all are probably tired of hearing me talk, um, but I would love to answer any questions that you may have. This was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. If again, you guys are um, interested in any of our products, head over to our website. If you're interested in getting custom work done, um, not on your face, but on your uh, brand, <laughs> Uh, feel free to click that custom work page. We really do have a, a great process for that. We do have the social media memberships for $5. Social media membership, amazing. We text you every single day an image to post and what to write with your caption and a story that matches every single day for $5 a month, guys. Um, at, um, uh, you to get the name and phone number at the top, just rename your template, whatever you want it to show up as. Uh, yes. Elise, can you get the eight week email um, template for credit? Do you mind popping that into the chat? Um, 
Yeah. And so I don't know if everyone was here at the very beginning, but when I created Elevated Agent, it was super duper important for me to take away all of the hurdles that we all face every day. So when I wanted to do a social media membership, I was like, I don't want to go and post it for everyone because that's not really beneficial. You guys really need to be doing your own social media because it's so personal. And I'm sorry, but your followers know if it's not you. Um, I'll put my Instagram page back in here. Um, and so you really need to be posting them, but we give you what to say. So you can, you kind of have a framework to write. Um, we also send it every day in the text message. We'll send you the link to Canva. So that way you can add your own picture in, or you can put your own phone number in that kind of thing. Um, I'm very, very, thank you, Elise. Um, happy and proud of my dogs for being quiet this whole time too. Yay for them. Yes. And you can always go on our website and search. The search function is so helpful because we have over 500 templates on there. So if you're looking for emails, just search emails. Or if you want text messages to send to your clients, search text. Um, and then all of those options will pop up. We have text messages, open houses, listing, buyer presentations, pre-listings, emails. Um, oh my gosh. So many social media templates. We have just plain buyer and seller marketing, like everything. Any other questions? I'm very happy you all stayed, jumped on. Be looking for this to come out next week on the YouTube. All right, guys. Well, I don't see any other questions popping in, so we are going to wrap it up. I hope everyone has a great weekend. And again, thank you so much for jumping on.